In module five, we're going to explore methods and models that relax the assumption of linearity between the, the predictor and the outcome. I'm going to start in this section to talk about uh, uh, polynomial regression. Um, this uh, you might have covered in previous uh, regression courses. And I'm going to use as an example this data set with about uh, 900 observations with measurements of the triceps. So triceps skin fold, which is a measure of uh, body fatness. And I'm going to, I want to explore the relation between age of the participants and this, this triceps me measurement. Uh, and the objective is going to, to be, as always, to estimate, to get an estimator for uh, this uh, f, uh, this function that relates the predictors with the outcome. Uh, in this setting, tricep is a continuous measurement, so we're going to, to focus on a continuous outcome. But what I'm going to say here can be uh, um, extended to other types of outcomes, um, uh, in particular binary and count data. And I'll, we'll have some examples in the, in, the, um, in the lab session. So as you can see here in this uh, so a relationship between age and triceps, um, you could think about using something that we've seen in the previous module, for example, a linear regression where we pre-specify the functional form of the association between the predictor age and, uh, and the outcome triceps. But as you can see, uh, the, the association really doesn't look uh, linear. So the, the, the model fit, fitness is very, is very poor. Um, we've seen uh, another method that is completely the opposite of, of, uh, of this uh, uh, completely parametric um, uh, model where we put a, a functional form for f, which is the uh, k-nearest neighborhood regression. Um, and we could fit here uh, a line um, uh, for the association between uh, age and triceps, but this has certain limitations. In particular, first of all, it's quite weakly this association, so it, it really is a very local method. And uh, um, and as we've said in previous in the previous modules, it's very hard to extend this to more than one predictor uh, due to the course of dimensionality. So. Um, Using this idea and still uh, uh, in the in the context of uh, fully parametric methods, uh, you could have recognized that a situation like this one, when you have the relationship and triceps uh, and age being you know not linear, we, you could try some uh, extension of the linear model um, by including uh, polynomial polynomial terms of higher degree uh, for the variable age. So we could try to ha get a, a quadratic effect of age. So notice that this, this is still a linear model. You can think about the, this uh, uh, x squared, so this age squared as a, a different variable. Okay. Uh, so this would allow a more flexible model. If you uh, model, uh, although if you look at the fitting, it's actually very similar. To the linear, uh, to the linear model, and the reason for that, um, you know, despite this, this bend here, is that is the, that we have a lot of observations in this part of the the, the plot, so it, it's really going to force the quadratic model uh, to fit there well, and um, the the fitting ends up being very similar to um, to the linear model, so we could go on and extend this for by including a, a cubic term for age, uh, it's, it's even a more flexible model. And you see now that the, the fitted uh, line um, starts to follow the, 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 the pattern of the data a little bit closer. Okay, so we, we, we uh, don't need to stop at the at cubic effect, we can have um, uh, a polynomial t term of the degree four. Again, it's going to be a little bit more uh, flexible than the, the cubic effect. And we could go on and um, try different types of polynomials. By now, we we um, know how we could compare uh, the fitting of these models. For example, by using cross validation. So we, we would fit, um, uh, let's say, degrees from one to ten, and uh, compute the mean square error. In this case, here I have the root mean square error uh, by cross validation, and then choose the 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 degree of the polynomial uh, with uh, with the, the lowest uh, mean square error. So in this case, 
uh, you can see that uh, by the mean square error criteria, uh, the, the, the polynomial of degree 8 would be the one with the lowest uh, mean square error. Okay, we could have chosen another um, another criteria for the for comparing the, the, the all these polynomials, for example, using the AIC criteria. Um, in this case, with AIC, uh, the AIC would choose uh, the polynomial of degree seven. It's very similar to results that you get from seven and eight and even nine and ten, um, but uh, the less complicated uh, model or uh, the model with uh, lowest degrees of freedom. Will uh, have, will show a better uh, AIC. Okay, you see here the fitting between um, a polynomial of degree eight and nine. It's 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 very very similar. Okay, so this would be one way of dealing with nonlinearity. The the um, and despite the fact that going high in terms of uh, the the polynomial uh, uh, polynomial degrees offering um, a more flexible uh, uh, function, we're still trying to fit the entire data with you know one very structured uh, form for the, the function uh, f of age or, of, or f of x, okay? So next we're going to see how we can even be more flexible in terms of fitting, fitting a curve to this data.